Éxito. Mejor disposición. Ah. Send. Nada más quiero que él me diga si sí si sirvió. A ver, a ver, preguntémosle a Gregorio. Y sirvió el link. Más ah. Eh... Estoy ahí por si sí, mi mamá, ay, ay, que no sé qué, ¿qué puedes, qué puedes contarme, la marica? Pero no me sé tu código. No, te... ah. no lo veo, ¿lo mandaste por mail? Sí. ¿Y la externa? Eh, le mando el link. Creo que puede. Pero pues si no, ahí lo ve, en delays. No es una señal si falla algo aquí, pero pues igual. Ay, de. Y de que, ah, no bueno, como que te hago así, ¿eh? Y tú ahí vienes todo técnico de Haití y la regas. Sí, claro. Ah, Listo, pues. Entonces, dejo esta abierta. Está quedando grabado. Okay. Y mire lo que me tocó. Estos autos no dan corriente. Entonces lo empecé a conectar aquí y no cargaba la porquería. Y sacaste el... Ay, yo, ah. yo aquí diciendo... Y entonces eh, bajé y encontré ahí uno, en un escritorio cualquiera, y le dejé una nota. Disculpe por ser tan abusiva, señor. Necesito esto para mi defensa. Se lo devuelvo en la, en la tarde. ¿Un escritorio de una persona? Sí. Pero no, no estaba conectado. Ojalá pueda trabajar. ¿Y de quién era el nombre? O sea, no tengo ni idea. Ahí está sentado al lado de Celia, pero no es de nuestro laboratorio. Al pelo, listo, ya está. ¡Woo! Ay, no, pero debo salir ahí toda. Oye, ayer fui a cine. Estaba tan ansiosa que fui a cine. Estuvo bacana. Pues, o sea, no es la retro locura, pero está buena. Aguanta el golpe. Muévete. Mira. Debo salir toda horrible. <risa> Parezco ahí como bailando. Bueno. Como para hacer un gif. <risa> ya, ah, que ya te ves. ve, que tu familia ya te ve. Oh, diles que vale. Bueno, es que lo chido aquí el broadcast es que tú lo emites, pero no escuchas a ninguno de ellos. Pero yo sí te escucho a ti. Sí, no, pues si no me escucharan. Y ya, que llegue la gente. Quiero empezar, quiero terminar. Mira, en tres horas. Pues, ay, en 24 horas. En tres horas estaré. En 24 horas estaré. Pero... Siente. No, no sé qué voy a hacer con el carro. Bueno, el carro no vale madre. Pero, pero entonces ven, prendió. Obviamente ayer es que lo rentaste. Ayer, ayer tenía la batería baja. Y el man me ¿Y dijo. ¿Por qué no le dijiste el tipejo? O sea, ¿por qué se lo aceptaste? No, es que el man me dijo. Ahí Efra, el cuellito sí está decente. Sí, sí no. O es sea, una el mancha. me dijo es que tiene 10 días aquí parado y nadie lo ha usado. Entonces le pasó corriente y me dijo, ya no eres tener ningún problema. Entonces yo le dije, bueno, pues si las cosas me puedo llevar los cables. Y no puedes llamarlo y decirle que quieres. Ah, que te... Pero pues es que solo era de que, oye, tengo que estar aquí. ¿Qué pues? Y yo ahorita les escribí y les dije, me estoy tocar. Y no les avisaba a los demás. Que... No, y no Pero no han comprado nada. No, no. Porque pues ya ves que los paseos aquí en Saudi son de puede pasar o no puede pasar. Lo chévere es que nuestras conversaciones interesantes están siendo grabadas, por siempre. Pues yo descubrí una mancha en una bubi de mi blusa, entonces no me puedo quitar el blazer. Pero, ¿por qué? Tiene una mancha. O sea, me estaba lavando los dientes y yo, ay, es como una sombra. Y ya saliendo si tiene una manchita aquí. ¿En serio? Pero no se nota casi. Bueno, de nuestro. Ah, es el otro lado. No se nota nada. Bueno. Se seca. No, pero yo creo que esa es una mancha que estaba vieja. <susurra> Qué bonita es la espera, qué bonita. Es horrible, ¿Cuántas personas crees que se tropiecen con el cable? 
Uy, lo, lo malo, pues que si alguien se tropieza, eh, se lleva mi concurso. Oye, tienes que estar ahí, mosca de pronto. De que si no funciona. Ay, miren a este Rodríguez. Bueno, bueno no. creo que es Gregorio. No, 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 no. no está Steffi, me reclamo. Bien, ¿y tú? Mira, mira, es fan de del, del broadcast vivo. Mi familia está viendo y Gregorio está viendo. Pero no nos Hola, muchachos. No los puedes escuchar. escuchar. Ah, no los puedo escuchar, pero, pero sí me escucho. Voy a quedar así. ¿Es Yeah, I made it work. Now my family is watching and Greg is watching. Come, come, come. You can't hear them. Everybody is like, oh, it's in there. Yes, everything. Everything at the same time. Let me take a picture of you before and after that with a big smile. With a nervous, fake smile. So, but uh, with this league, how we then do the discussion with Christine, so we can... She can uh, after that, he can, she can connect. I mean, because here she can watch live, but then we, we're not able to hear her. Hello. Hi. Good morning. The coffee is there. Well, the... Ah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We were talking like, and then I'm like, oh no, it's like being recorded and heard by my family. But why there is no sound? Or not yet? There's no sound from them. We cannot hear from them. Ah, they hear us. Yes, I mean, you're not able to hear because... And it's also recording. You will have the video after that. I will be on YouTube. I mean, I can send you the link. Everyone is watching for a while. I didn't know you could do this. Well, I taught you. Now I'm at this. I'm only doing it for you. So. Oh, that's a huge plan. So your family stayed up late? Yeah, it's one in the morning. They love me that much. And also my aunt from the states. Francie wanted the link as well. Is she watching? Ah. Uh, there are four viewers. Oh, can I know who they are? No, I just know there's four viewers. I mean, I sent around an email with the link. So you can generate uh, a YouTube link with this. But then for some reason, I don't know. Who's there? Oh, no, there are two viewers. Someone left. They said, ah, I'm boring. <laughs> Don't they? You're evil. Yeah. Yeah. Celia calls you. Oh, yes. Uh, you can ignore it. Because I was looking for a cable. Oh. And I was like, Celia! And she didn't pick up. And you didn't pick up. Yeah, because I was <laughs> Because I thought you were still home. And I was like, oh, I thought for sure it has one. Because I have it. Yeah, I have one. But I didn't bring this. Because he's talking. Pero porque este no sirvió. Ni este, ni este. Ni esos. Pero igual mejor que se lo pidas a Celia si quieres regreso a este. Ah. Yo le dije que también lo iba a agarrar ahí. Sigamos esperando. Ya me lo ¿Y quién es el otro comité? Sí, es Jasmine, Ana, la muchacha de Australia y Timmy. Cinco viewers. Uy, eh. Ah, soy yo. Tambo. Jonathan, te va a ir súper bien. Mucha suerte. Ahí estaré conectado. Oh, y el muñequito de cristal. ¿El muñequito está bien? Ven, saluda a todo el mundo. Pero ya saluda a todo el mundo. Pues mira, no importa, pero hay más, nuevos. hay más gente. ¿Mm? Es que no sé quién está, pero, no pero la misma hay más ruptura. gente. Creo que está. Okay, se lo mandé a Francia, se lo mandé a Muñeco, se lo mandé a mi familia, a Gregorio, a una tía en Estados Unidos. Súper increíble. ¿Qué le pasó? Pues Mafe ya está lista. ¿Qué le pasó, ¿Mm? Rodrigo? Se rompió aquí. Ay, pues Rodrigo, rompe todo. En la bolsa, en la bolsa está ahí. ¿Cómo? Está Tú lo botas todo. Bolsa? Tú ¿Cómo? lo botas todo. No, sin el case. En la bolsa. ¿Sí? Dentro de chocas con nada. No, yo estaba sentado en un coche en un viaje largo y de repente sale. Ya está roto. Así. No, I can maybe you need to move. Maybe I'm not going to sit there. Yeah, I can move. Yeah. Well, we don't need to leave the computer there. 
Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Maybe the room won't be enough. Sorry? The room won't be enough. Oh, no one with the cable. Hope no one with the chair like this. And then my computer. <sighs> Evra, can you please pay attention to the cable? Because I won't be paying it. You can put the chair on and just sit Wait, it has no charge? It does, but I don't know how long. I mean, since it's broadcasting for maybe an hour. You think I can just unplug it before it's time? If it's full? It should be. Actually, it is. Well, if it doesn't, then I can plug it again. If you want, I can check it. <laughs> uh, no, I will freak <laughs> out. Actually, I want to close my email. No, I didn't know that. You know if she got the, the link, Tim? I don't know. Because, I mean, I sent it to both her emails, and my family is also connected. And they well, she is back to the day, apparently, right? Yesterday evening. Yeah. So, yeah, nothing has to be here to record it. I mean, you are oh, here with all the is this uh, Christine joining from England or? Yes, actually, I mean, I sent her a link and she's able to follow it live on YouTube. Ah, I see. So, and it worked for my family because I sent it around to my husband oh, wow. and my family. <laughs> so hopefully she, she'll get it. And if, even if she gets, uh, she opens it late, she will just say it late. Cool. Thank you. I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know either. My husband. No. Oh, and idea. Maria, what is your final work of the thesis? Did what you upload it on the Dropbox? Didn't be seen. Dropbox. Didn't be seen in her. Yes. Using another. The last one on Dropbox is from 2019. It's over. It's a live link on YouTube. I don't. I think. I sent it around. So. Uh, nice guys. Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to send? I think is it before? No, I was just wondering. So uh, because that is my latest. That's the last see. one. I, have. I can quickly send oh, it if you want. Or just put it there. Can you Skype? Save? It is one you can. Yeah, it is one. I actually use something called GoToMeeting, which really works. I think it's really, really good. But GoToMeeting? And it's like you can. Have 35 people. Mm -hmm. The screen gets divided. This is a half of my lab at times. Yes. Because yes. We, any animal that comes in over here or somewhere else. Yes. So I said that you're going to do that. So sometimes if you come to the lab. Should I start? Should I get the screen? Less here. Can we start without it? Oh, she's not there yet. Okay. Let's wait for the external. Yes, I'm not the money by doing so. <laughs> So thank you for the dinner invitation. It's very sweet. Did she Skype or? Because once I call her, what time is there? Do you think she'll be in the office? I can try to do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm away for three weeks. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm leaving some of the kids. Anyway. It's his turn. When you just drop your name on your lap, tell you how it's like. Yeah, it's like. Okay, I'm going to call you. Um, so I just sat there and he's just serious. Hey, baby, I'm just too many.
Yeah. I know. Yeah. I have six this these days. Six this. Yes, four years. And was it good? Mm. Oh, so if she's traveling, maybe she won't pick up. Okay. That makes it easy for the community. Yeah, you the part of Christine Wells. Please take it on and number the show. No, she's not in the office. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's 4 p.m. there. Uh, hi, Christine. This is Marie. I was just wondering if you got the link to the presentation, but you're not in the office. So, never mind. Bye bye. No. No team members. You have heard more. But she never confirmed that she was going to join. I haven't yet read these two pages. I started, but then I realized I was getting late. I started the second one. I saw that the external coming with this as much. So the one that's actually a shit. But actually, I realized that it was like anything. Of course, you know, there are corrections and other things. When you see too many of those, you feel. Actually, you know those where he had a clarification with small things, not yeah. all the questions, but I was too. When you see your, your external is with this much thick, yes. this thing. Yes. So I used to do that, and now I stop. No, it can be okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry for the delay, everyone. The professor from Australia that's supposed to be joining for some reason is not answering at all. So we're just giving her a few moments. She got the date right, yeah. Sorry? She got the date right. So my Yes, I sent my GTM plus three. No, that's all. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, you know, I, I was just joking. I mean, we all know this. <laughs> and if she gets the link, I mean, she would have probably the same thing that I can do. While I'm in minute 10, she would just catch up. I think because I'm doing it with that. I'm trying to find it. She goes there and so on. But, but, but I'm seeing in a, in a 3D space model, yeah. say your tiny cell is here, this is your tissue, so it is normal. So the whole thing is maybe skin cancer and other things which are like exposed to reality and yes. can kind of, you know. Yes. But uh, I will see you again, you know. Do you have been told, I don't know about this, but I've been told or spread or heard. Sometimes certain cancers, but the moment you dish, you disturb the tissue. It tends to do met metastasis um, here. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's not necessarily a good thing for you to do. I don't know. <laughs> 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 it's really slow. Oops. That's good. And the, actually, the cells on the outside tend to be. So dead. So the ones on the inside are dead. In a tumor, at least. Yes. But they're very different. Yeah. But it's quite interesting. And then you have your stem cell, your circulating tumor cell. So maybe if we could target the circulating tumor cell, which is the one that supposedly does the testosterone. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
this is where everyone, uh, I'm thinking there are certain bacteria and virus which hides, including malaria, which hides inside the tissue. Uh, this potentially could be tried because these guys cannot go anywhere. Yeah, okay. I don't want to speak to Okay, guys, let's start. So, this is a tesis defense for Maria Contreras. Uh, this is this student in mind, and you get to sell that. Uh, so first, uh, let me thank the committee member, Professor Arnold Payne from BC, Jasmine Matuma from BC, Jürgen Possel from Electrical Engineering, myself and Christine Wells from University of Queensland, Australia, but we cannot contact her. So last night she saw she was here, but now she's in the <laughs> So we will try to contact her during the presentation. Okay, she doesn't need to be here during the presentation. That's what there is. So Maria, she graduated from uh, uh, with an undergrad in physics from the University National de Bogota, of the Columbia in Bogota, and then she moved to Caos to do a master in bioscience, right? Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and then joined uh, a project together with me, you again, uh, you know, in Boko our lab. And uh, so that's the title of her. The presentation, and you can see it's more Jurgen related topic, so it's always credible to Jurgen for what my guess she did, not to me. Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for attending my PhD dissertation. The title of my project is Magnetic Nanowires for Cancer Cell Destruction. As Steve mentioned, I work under the supervision of uh, Professor Timothy Thomas in Drinking Coffee. Okay, this is the presentation outline. I will start with a brief introduction and state of the art. Then I will be talking about magnetic nanowires. Later on, I will be describing the interaction of these nanowires with cells in culture. And finally, I would be describing the treatment I applied to the cancer cells in which I added nanowires and later I applied ammonia. I will wrap up with a summary application. Okay, in this first part, I will be covering the state of the art of cancer therapies. Then I will be talking about uh, how the nanowires behave when you, when you apply to them an alternating magnetic field or AMF, their uses in the medicine and how these three things together uh, contributed to be the motivation of the motivations of my work. Okay, so cancer, as you might all know, has huge economic and social impact in the US alone. Over a hundred billion dollars are spent yearly in the detection, diagnosis, and the treatment. Current cancer therapies involve surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, targeted therapy, and hyperthermia. This last one uh, refers to the use of magnetic nanoparticles to uh, generate heat when an alternating magnetic field of high frequencies is applied to them. This heat um, uh, kills cancer cells. There are some challenges associated to these uh, therapies, such as the non-specific non delivery of anti-tumor agents and their highly associated toxicity. However, uh, interestingly enough, nanotechnology has been helping in this regard, overcoming these challenges. If you use magnetic nanostructures, you can couple them, for example, to a drug and apply chemotherapy. Or you can uh, also attach targeting agents such as uh, peptides or antibodies to the particles to also uh, use targeted therapy uh, with the magnetic nanostructures. And because you can remotely control them, you can move them, you can confine them in space, that would help a lot with this non-specific delivery of your toxic substances. Within these magnetic nanostructures, we do have magnetic nanowires that have additional properties that will be covered in the next slide that made me uh, choose these uh, particles for this. Okay, here you see a magnetic nanowire. The black arrow there is its magnetic moment. And because of the, um, uh, their chip characteristics, they do have the highest vibration, meaning the length is way longer compared to its width. Uh, that makes them have shape and isotropy, which uh, would determine the magnetic properties they prefer. They, they present, sorry. For the materials I worked with, uh, it happens that because of the shape, the magnetization lies along the nanowire as shown in there. When you apply an alternating magnetic field, <coughs> the one shown here, it's just a field that uh, flips up and down, as you can see with the arrows. The nanowire would do this at a given frequency, the frequency of the, of the, of the field. Uh, this movement, I mean, if you want to think in an analogy uh, of it, 
think of a compass needle. So imagine the, the nanowire as a nano compass needle. Uh, this movement, this oscillation, has a torque, a magnetic torque associated to it. So here I'm just drawing one field line for simplicity. And I'm drawing also the magnetic moment, the angle between the two. And the things in the green are the magnetic torque, magnetic, magnetic forces respectively. So this magnetic torque is given by the cross product of the magnetic moment and the external field. And uh, when the angle between the two is 90 degrees, it has its maximum value. Okay, uh, there are some biomedical applications in which nanowires have been used. The main material source are, are nickel and iron and their dimensions range from 35 to 300 nanometers in diameter, and their lengths can go from 2 to 35 micro. Uh, some of the biological applications include cell separation and uh, bioentity transportation using different uh, magnetic fields. So here the nanowires in the second part are just um, incubated and they bind to either microorganisms or uh, uh, different types of cells. And because you can control the wires, you can control whatever uh, attaches to them. Uh, regarding more therapeutic oriented applications, I will be focusing in uh, cell reduction. So uh, the protocol followed normally in the uh, literature you, you can find out there is more or less the same. So they just start culturing the cancer cells, then they add magnetic micro nanostructures, and finally they apply an autonomic magnetic field to excite these particles and hopefully affect the cells in different uh, ways. The amplitudes that they use are from 10 to 100 millitesla, and the frequencies uh, do cover a broad range. They can go from a few hertz up to hundreds of kilohertz. If you use low frequencies, the principle I just described you before, this nano uh, compass needle principle holds true. So you do have a mechanical actuation uh, because the wires do oscillate. However, if you go higher in the frequencies, this is no longer possible. The wires cannot follow the field and you have a heat production associated to it. And this is basically the, the principle they call the following hyperthermia case. Okay, so all this together um, motivated this work. So mainly because due to the highly associated toxic and uh, toxicity of the current cancer therapies, we wanted to come up with a treatment, like an alternative treatment that would uh, rely only on mechanical actuation, mainly on the oscillation of the wires. Uh, that, that would have a uh, lower associated toxicity to it. And uh, why nanowires? Because you can control how toxic they are. If you fabricate them, I mean, if you choose a material and to a less extent the geometry, and also, of course, you can always choose the doses you add to cells, you can minimize the toxicity they uh, exert by themselves to cells in culture. But uh, especially we chose wires because they have high, uh, higher associated magnetic torques when you compare with the uh, typical sphere, spherical particles uh, that are currently used in the field. And finally, uh, there was, uh, back in 2009, a paper that proved that uh, mag magnetomechanical transduction therapy worked on glioma cells. So that was kind of an inspiration for us because they successfully uh, killed glioma cells with magnetic microwaves. However, the inconvenient here is the size. It's in the micro range. So we really want to scale it down to the nano size. So here's the, the principle in, in this drawing. So we have a cancer cell in culture. We add the wires, we'll let them incubate with the cells. And then we apply a low frequency, low intensity field that would make the wires uh, oscillate as, as described to you before. And uh, later when we turn up the field, we will measure how the cells uh, got affected by this field. Okay, I will step now into uh, showing you how I fabricate and how I characterize the magnetic nanowires. Uh, the objective of this chapter was to find the experimental parameters that would lead to a robust and reproducible magnetic nanowire fabrication. The process we, uh, I used in, for this was a two-step polarization plus uh, followed by the electrical position. So everything is started with this aluminum substrate, a highly pure aluminum substrate. And uh, here on the left side, you will be seeing a schematics of the steps. In the middle, you will be seeing optical images, how the sample looks like as I process it. And here on the uh, right-hand side, you will see a scanning electron microscope images of the process. <laughs> uh, okay, as I mentioned, I start with this. This has two and a half uh, centimeters in diameter. And as you can see, the surface is very rough, evidence here by the SEM picture. However, when doing uh, an electropolishing, I just apply a voltage and the electric field helps in smoothing the surface 
you obtain something like this or like this in that scene. Later, I proceed and I perform a first standardization. What is standardization? You uh, uh, apply or expose the aluminum to an electrolytic solution. Uh, it can be, it's an acid, normally it's uh, oxalic or phosphoric acid. And under a uh, given experimental condition, aluminum oxide also receives the name of aluminum and I will be referring as aluminum for the next So when you take a closer look after 24 hours with an SEM, a top image, you see this uh, kind of pore-like structure, a bit disorganized and with no, not a uniform pore size. That is from here to the top. However, if you take a look at the interface, the interface between the aluminum and the alumina, you do have an order. That's why I went ahead and etched all the alumina from it. So by taking a top SEM image from D, you see this we differ significantly from here. You do have an order here and a uniform pore size. If you go ahead and use this template like as a mold for a next standardization process, you get something completely different from what you got before. So C and E are the very same experimental process. However, the outcomes, this is C, this is E, are very different. So here we do have an order, we do have a uniform pore size, and this is actually the template we use to deposit the wires. And this one corresponds to a cross-section image of our sample. You can see how parallel and nice the pores look like. And the two of these, these two images resemble each other because this was basically the nano indentation, if you wish, that, would, uh, that worked to fabricate later the aluminum oxide. The two final steps consist in creating this kind of finger-like structures or dendrites at the bottom of the pores in order to create a conductive path. And later, I just add a, a solution which contains metallic ions. I apply a pulse voltage, and that would attract the ions to the bottom of the pores, and I will fill up the pores with the magnetic material of interest. This is how final sample, a finalized successful sample looks like. <coughs> Within this black area, you have all your deposited nanowires, and you have um, a number around of 10 to the power 9 uh, nanowires within this area. I want the wires in solution in order to add them to the cells with our drone in solution as well. So I use an etchant, uh, sodium hydroxide, to dissolve the aluminum oxide membrane. And then I'm, I let it etch. You have your nanowires that are free in the solution. I wash them at least five times in ethanol. Ethanol has been shown to preserve the magnetic properties of the wires over time very you know, nicely. And then right before adding them to cells, I wash them at least three times with cell culture medium. That is basically cell food. Okay, here are some electron microscope images of the wires. The top two are SEM, the bottom two are transmission electron microscope images or TEM. Here uh, you can see released nanowires on top of a silicon wafer. These are uh, nickel nanowires. And the second image is the detail of the dendrite I, I mentioned to you before, the step prior to the deposition. So you can see how, how they look like. And this bottom two uh, highlight the naturally occurring oxide layer of the wires. When we expose them to different solutions, they do grow this oxide layer in both nickel and iron. This image is a high resolution TEM, so each one of the dots here, it's natural. I did composition analysis of this, so I found out that there you can only find uh, oxygen and the corresponding metallic material. So you do have a nickel oxide here and a type of iron oxide on your iron line. This layer is important because that's what the cells are seeing. So they are in contact with this oxide layer rather than the bulk magnetic material. So if you want to attach something to the wires, like, I don't know, some biological um, entity or whatever, you need to consider that you do have this layer in order to successfully find <coughs> chemical binding. Okay, let's move now to the interaction of the wires with the cells. I will be covering mainly how the toxicity, how is the toxicity they, they exert and how are they internalized uh, by the cells. Uh, the main aim of this chapter is, was to get an insight into this interaction. You can find a lot of information about the application of the wires, like they want to, they use them for different purposes. But unfortunately, when you go and look in detail, there is not much information about the interaction itself. So you don't know exactly what are the effects of the wires when you incubate them with the cells, which internalization pathway they follow, and so on. So we wanted to, to understand that better, 
to have more information and establish suitable conditions to later apply the drill. Okay, so I will be first talking to you about the site of toxicity or cell toxicity of iron and nickel wires on colon cancer cells. I always work with this type of cells. And I did this experiment with an empty TSA that uh, measures the metabolic activity at the mitochondria. So these are the results for iron wires, one micron long and four micron long wires. The color codes for the incubation time of the wires with the cells. So we have these three and one three. This is cell viability. So how basically happy the cells are. We have our negative control that, um, in which we don't add any wires. So that, that corresponds to our 100% signal. And in the x-axis, we have different concentrations that range from 10 up to 10,000 wires per cell over here. And uh, yeah, these are the results for uh, iron wires. Uh, taking a reference of an 80% mark, we can see that, for example, uh, for the one microgram iron wires, Everything remains above the same. So no major toxicity is elicited, even for this uh, very high concentration at times up to 74 hours. And uh, when we increase four times the length, we see that this is slightly different. Only for the higher uh, incubation times and concentrations, the signal drops a bit below 80%, but not significantly. I mean, significantly, significantly respect to the control, but not like, um, for example, compared to the shorter length. These are the results for nickel, one micro nickel, five micro nickel. Uh, experimental conditions were the same. The only difference is that here we only tried up to 1,000 uh, nanowires per cell. We didn't go higher because viability was already, um, already decreased a lot. And again, taking this reference, here we have that this uh, threshold is uh, surpassed for lower concentrations at that earlier time points. So from this uh, set of experiments, we can first, uh, first see that viability, does, viability reduction sorry, correlates with both the nanowire concentration and the incubation time for the two materials and the two lengths observed. Uh, secondly, that nickel nanowires are more toxic than iron nanowires. They are not, iron nanowires are tolerated for higher concentration and longer incubation uh, times. And that there is not significant uh, length dependent toxicity. If you think about it, we are adding here five times or four times more material, but you don't see things dropping five times or, uh, or four times. So um, there is not like a, a strong correlation between the length of the wires and the toxicity of the cells. Okay, what about the nickel ions? If we focus on the nickel ions, uh, what's their part on this whole toxicity story? So this is what I just showed you. These are the results from five micron long wires and uh, five micron nickel wires and the toxicity profile. And this is just a schematic of what happens in the cells. Uh, if we focus now on nickels, uh, we wanted to know what's the role in this story. So if they exert a similar toxicity profile, if they show it, then they will be relevant in the process. However, what we find is uh, the opposite. If you compare the two profiles, for example, for uh, concentrations below 200, they do not affect the cells at all. However, when you apply 1,000 concentration, they, 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 does, they do it in the single ions. What does this tell us? Well, first of all, that we don't see a correlation between the two. And secondly, that the dissolution of the wires is not significant in the process. If it were, you would have more nickel ions available, and then they would exert a similar toxicity behavior. So the toxicity is more attributed to let's say the shape and the bulk form, the solid form of the nickel, rather than to its um, ionic form. So yeah, the solution here is very minimal for the measured times uh, of our experiment. Okay, let's briefly talk about another cytotoxic, cytotoxic effects of nickel nanowires. I'll be talking about the cell membrane leakage you say, and uh, the two cell -led pathways, the two main cell -led pathways of the cells that are in the process in the this is a leaky cell. You just have uh, your membrane is compromised, so the contents of the cell are kind of spread out. And I put these two assays in, in together in purpose because this is exactly what happens if you have necrosis. When cells die through necrosis, your cell explodes and all the contents are all around the place. It's pretty messy. However, when they, oh, sorry, when they die through apoptosis, the cell kind of um, forms smaller vesicles. Those vesicles are called apoptotic bodies and they remain in the culture for a while. 
if these apoptotic bodies are not taken care of by specialized cells like macrophages, they would eventually explode again. This happens in in vitro cultures because you don't have um, different types of cells like in, an, in our body. So in our body, the apoptotic bodies are eaten up by the macrophages, they're further degraded. But in these cultures, these apoptotic bodies, uh, at a later time point, they do explode as if it were necrosis. This is called the secondary necrosis process. So in order to characterize if the cells go to one of the other cells and um, undergo each one of the other pathways, uh, I used um, fluorescent assorted cell sorting or FACS. And the two different dyes were used to characterize or to um, stain the cells. Propidium iodide uh, binds to the DNA and it's non permeable to healthy cells. So if you have your cell with a nice uh, membrane, not like this, for example, the dye cannot go in, it doesn't bind to the DNA, and it doesn't fluoresce. Uh, to detect apoptosis, uh, annexin 5 was used and it binds to this uh, phospholipid, phosphatidylserine or PS. And here it works like uh, we have a lipid bilayer in the cells, inner leaflet and outer leaflet. PS is located in the inner leaflet. Whenever you go to, uh, cells go to apoptosis, this uh, phospholipid flips from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell, and it's exposed to the wall. Then annexin 5 can see it, and it thrusts, so that's how uh, we detected apoptosis here. So this is the, um, the 4x4 um, situation we have. If we have a double negative, like nothing was sustained, we have cells that are alive. If they only stay for PI, they're necrotic, they explode it. If they only stay for annexing, they are uh, apoptotic. And if they present both dyes, if they fluoresce for the two channels, uh, we do have late apoptotic or early necrotic cells. This is the case of secondary necrosis. So they did stay for apoptosis, but something happened, no macrophages got there, they eventually explode. And that's why we have also signal for Okay, so these are the results for the membrane they did the same. Uh, here we measure the percentage. Our 100% buffers are lysed cells, so cells in which we just add lysed buffer, a substance that makes them explode. That is our 100% signal, and everything is measured with respect to that. Again, the color codes for the incubation time of the wires with the cells, and we have here different concentrations. And C stands for its negative control. <coughs> that is the um, uh, experimental condition in which no nanowires wires were added. So here we see, the first thing we see is that something really uh, abrupt happens from 48 to 72 hours. The increase in cell and um, membrane leakage is significant, like it's very strong. And when looking at what is happening here, we go ahead and uh, to the facts results. And we can see um, this, this order here follows exactly the same of the facts. So you have the negative control for the three points, 100, 100, and 1,000. This jump, in each one of the concentration can be also found here. So focusing the 100 to 1, we have here mostly cells alive, a bit of early apoptotic, and some of these tunic puppy. If we want to correlate with the signal, we'll have to look for the PI positive cells, so green and purple. So in between these two time points, we do have, we do see a sudden increase in the purple and a bit less in the green cells. And if you see this bar, this bar, and this are all the 72 hours. This one is around 50%, this one is around 80%, and this one is about the 90%, the combination of the two colors, which roughly correlate with the signal we got from here. And facts is telling, in, uh, telling us in addition that uh, they do induce apoptosis, the wires for the first two time points. But then we have this jump to late apoptotic cells that is associated to the secondary necrosis process. And only for the later time, time points, we do have a bit of necrosis or cells with only PI um, state. Okay, I already mentioned it, but we, have, we do have a correlation, we have an good jump here, and we may need this apoptosis and only at the end, and um, necrosis by the need on the wires. Okay, now let's move a bit into internalization, how the wires are internalized by the cells. And to, in order to do this, I did, well, I just cultured the cells and a guy from the core lab did the end of this for me. Uh, this is how the cells look like. These are control cells, no nanowires were added. I, I, sorry. And here we have a different features. So we have four cells one, two, three, four. We see the nucleus here, the mitochondria all around the place, here, 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 and also here. Uh, we have lipid droplets, something that was uh, heavily observed in my, in my cancer cell line. And here, for example, we have the Golgi apparatus. Uh, 
uh, this is the apical side of the memory because our cells are important. When you incubate the wires for uh, one hour, oh, first I want to tell you that for both iron and nickel, the same processes were observed. So I'm not making any distinction here because what I saw for one type of wires, I saw it for the other. So this is a group of magnetic nanowires in touch with the apical side of the membrane, touching this kind of filopodia of the cell. Uh, this is another group of wires being internalized by the cells there. And if I zoom in in these two areas, you can actually see the membrane coating the wire, the wire is still engulfing, like surrounded by a vesicle in itself. And the same happened for this. I feel these are two wires. This one's the second wire. And here you can see the magic uh, This is a fully internalized group of wires. You have like a, a form, a totally formed a vesicle around them already inside the cell. And all this happened for a one hour incubation time. If you move further, if, when, they, when we take a look when they are incubated for 24 hours, they are mostly found inside endosomes. And if we move even further in time, they again, we found them in endosomes, but kind of uh, moving to towards um, lysosomes. Okay, so from these images, we know that uh, iron and nickel nanowires are internalized after only one hour. Of, you can see they start to be fully internalized after one hour incubation. And for further time points, they are mostly found in endosomes, but like moving towards lysosomes. And uh, this internalization process didn't seem to have, uh, di didn't seem to be dependent on the material of the wires. For both nickel and iron, the same roughly dynamic was observed. <coughs> here, you cannot do a, a lot of statistic with TEM, but like roughly, we observed that they are both into and then we wanted just to know which internalization pathway are the following. And the cell have different ways of eating up things, so we just wanted to know which one is used by nickel nanowires. So in this regard, three different internalization inhibitors were used. A calvulate dependent endocytosis one, a clarpine dependent endocytosis, and that one that inhibited phagocytosis. So the principle here was as follows. We measure viability, and in these first four bars, uh, we have our negative control and the, the three inhibitors just to make sure the inhibitors themselves didn't affect the cells. And they didn't at the concentration used. And then these four other bars do resemble these conditions, but here nanowires were added. So we know when we add nanowires to cells, the uh, viability is decreased, as shown here. So the, the, the reasoning behind this was like, okay, if we add the wires and the inhibitor and we measure the same viability drop as when we culture with only the wires, that means the wires are getting inside nevertheless. So the inhibitor is not uh, impeding this internalization process. However, if by adding the wires and the inhibitor, we go back to the condition with no wires, then that means this inhibitor is actually blocking the internalization of the wires, and that's the pathway the nanowires follow. So for the first two, we found that the levels remain the same, meaning no nanowires were internalized. But for the third one, uh, the viability levels were as the controls. So that means the nanowires do follow, nickel nanowires are internalized by phagocytosis. And that is shown uh, in the systematic here. Okay, that concludes the interaction chapter. And the final chapter consists in the uh, application of the treatment of the cancer cells with nanowires and the magnetic. So the aims for this chapter were firstly to prove how well our proposed magnetomechanical treatment worked. Basically, we had this idea of using nanowires that mainly oscillate. I want to see how this um, work with cancer cell, as a cancer cell treatment. And later, uh, we wanted to determine which are the relevant experimental parameters. From all the things we can change, which one affected the most the, um, enhance or, uh, the enhancement, enhancement of the treatment. Okay, so uh, briefly I will take you over what I did with this schematic. So again, I have a cell, I incubate the wires, the wires interact with cells. We have evidence that they're internalized for, uh, within one hour incubation time. Then I apply the field, the wires would oscillate. Uh, I did uh, experimentally corroborate that the wires do move when they are not bound to cells. So this is another wire with the red um, arrow. And you can see how whenever you change the field direction, the wire did align with it, as I described to you at the beginning of the presentation. <laughs> when you turn off the field, you wanted to know what happened to the cells. 
uh, maybe, and I rely on these two assays I have been working with, so viability and uh, membrane integrity. Okay, these are the different conditions I use for the treatment. The nanowire material, iron and nickel, the concentration, 100 and 500. Field amplitudes range, range from 0.5 up to 300 millitesla. And they used to consist of 1 and 1,000 hertz. The incubation times of the cells with the wise uh, values were 1, 5, 9, and 14 hours. For each set of experiments, I have um, three controls and the actual treatment. So I have my negative control where no wires or field was applied were applied, sorry, and then a wire control where I only applied, uh, I will, where, where I only added that wire, a field control where I only applied field, and the treatment that consisted in the com combination of the two conditions. And this is the experimental setup. Okay, the first set of experiments, yeah. I used the two materials, the two concentrations, and I the lowest amplitude, and the two different frequencies, one in 1,000 hertz, and I incubate the cells with the wires for one hour. And uh, these are the experiments, uh, the results, sorry, for cell viability. These are the results for cell memory leakage. And in the bottom axis, you can see the different conditions. So the negative control, only nickel wires, only iron wires, only field, and the combination. And the same here for LDH. I only added here an apoptotic um, reference to see how much do apoptotic cells leak. Uh, what I'm showing here are ranges. So I have here a lot of parameters. So I took the lower value, the maximum value, and I just put them here. For example, as shown here. Within this range, you do have, for example, your low concentration and the frequency, the two frequencies used, and the same for the high, high concentration. Uh, these dots were drawn there in purpose because overall, I didn't see an effect on the frequency. So changing the frequency, changing how fast the wires rotate, uh, didn't infringe much effect in the viability. What was the determinant a parameter was the nanowire concentration. That made the viability drop uh, more in a, at a given condition. Okay, so here uh, for viability, we have that the, the range of reduction in viability is considerably larger. And these bottom dots correspond to the high concentration for both wires. We don't have a significant difference in, in the effectiveness of one material or the other. And uh, all the controls remain uh, and didn't, ex uh, didn't affect the cells as much. This is not absurd for the membrane leakage. The controls did exert some uh, moderate leakage. However, the treatment uh, increased, further, uh, increased a bit more this, um, this uh, make the cells leak more. If we focus on this, um, the combination of these two signals, like a, a, some reduction of the uh, uh, cell viability and a moderate increase of uh, cell membrane leakage, the two together suggest an apoptotic induction of the second round of experiments, the material now is only iron at the 500 to 1 concentration. I increase the field amplitude. I want to see what happens when you have higher forces associated. And I stick to one hertz frequency, or the frequency didn't have an effect. And I incubated for four different time points here. And these are the results. So again, cell viability measures. And you have here the different controls and the, the, the application of the treatment for the different incubation times. Uh, let's pay attention to the dark bars, which correspond to the treatment. For this uh, field of 7 millitesla, even though I increase the field intensity, meaning that I increase the force, uh, the viability drop was, simi uh, was, was similar to the one observed for uh, 0 0.5 millitesla, the field I applied before. And uh, incubating for longer times didn't have an effect, a positive effect, in reducing more cell viability. So here, from this experiment, we can conclude that the nanowire internalization uh, or the percentage of cells with internalized nanowires didn't correlate uh, with the cell viability reduction. And uh, the final experiment I did was with the same uh, material, concentration, and uh, frequency values. Here I just changed the field amplitude for these four values, 10, 50, 100, and 300 millitesla. And uh, I incubated the cells for one hour as it was the more suitable time. I mean, the time for which I obtained a higher viability drop. And these are the results. 
So viability again, the different conditions, the treatment uh, correspond to the dark bars. And here are the different magnetic field intensity values I applied. If you focus in 10 and 50, the values, the viability values remain roughly the same to the ones I obtained for 7 and 0 0.5. So even though I'm increasing here, the intensity of the field way more, the same levels are obtained. However, if I go further for 100 and 300, I start seeing a decrease in the viability um, for these two field values. So here, we have the field intensity had a positive correlation with cell viability reduction for fields higher uh, than 100 milliseconds. I would like to summarize this latest experiment to see what we are, what I understand from this process so far. So here I'm just listing the different field intensities I use, the forces associated to them, and the cell viability I measure. These three values were not significantly different from each other. And even though I, I have a broad range of forces, these viability values didn't uh, decrease uh, regarding this. However, if I did increase the force over a certain threshold, I start seeing these values significantly decrease. Um, interestingly enough, there was a publication in 91 that um, estimated the force needed to mechanically disrupt this, the membrane of the cells, and this force value is around 100 at picometers which falls into this uh, threshold. So we do have a threshold force in which viability remains, remains unaffected or unaltered uh, when changing the intensity of the field. However, above this force, we start uh, seeing some uh, effects in cell death, like an increased cell death. Okay, I will wrap up and conclude. <laughs> so as a summary, first I show you how we were able to fabricate nanowires here at Calif. We use a two-step analyzation process followed by electrode position. Uh, we successfully fabricated and characterized nickel and iron nanowires of 25 nanometers in diameter and lengths ranging from 1 to uh, 5 microns. Nickel nanowires were considerably more toxic to the colon cancer cell use than iron nanowires at, for the same concentrations and incubation times. That makes iron a more um, appealing material for biomedical applications. And a comparative study of nanowire material, the two materials I mentioned, and was reported for the first time under the, very, under the very same experimental conditions. So people always talk about the nickel is, that iron is better, sorry, but they never actually proved it under the very same experimental conditions. So from here, uh, we can conclude that the toxicity associated to the wires has a lot to do with the material. Uh, we defined some safe doses, we found some safe, safe doses for both of the, uh, the nanowires for nickel. They were safe from uh, at a 10 to 1 concentration up to 48 hours. For iron, they, we have a way considerably larger um, road of tolerance in terms of concentration and incubation time. So you can add up to 1,000 wires per cell for 24 hours or 200 to 1 up to 72 hours. And regarding the treatment, we found that the cell viability reduction could be modulated in terms of cell viability and membrane integrity by just changing the parameters we use. We see a broad um, a range of around 20% reduction if we play around with the parameters. The maximum cell viability reductions found were 65 and 57% for iron nanowires at uh, 100 millitels and 300 millitels of fields, respectively. And the parameters that were no influential in our proposed treatment were the frequency of the field and the material of the nanowires that only had a small effect. And finally, what was important or what changed viability reduction when we altered the value was the incubation time of the nanowire with the cells, so the internalization process, and the nanowire concentration was very important. And finally, the intensity of the applied field that determined how strong the force associated to the wire was. Uh, these are the papers that were published in uh, peer reviewed conferences or journals, and uh, some of them, the latest ones, are being currently reviewed. And uh, finally, I would like to thank a lot of people, but mainly to my advisors, Tim and Jurgen, for all their support and patience throughout these years. Uh, all the lab members from both labs, from Jurgen's lab, the Sensing Magnetism and Microsystems Group, and Tim's lab, the Integrity system bio Systems Biology Lab. Here, special thanks to Efrain for being my friend all these years in the lab, and outside the lab as well. Uh, to my committee members, of course, thank you very much for being here. Uh, core lab facilities people, especially Duncan Rashid, they help me with the TM. 
my cat family. I consider the people I hang out here with my family. <laughs> And uh, my family back in Colombia, but especially my mom and my sister, and to Greg, the love of my life. Thank you very much. <laughs> and of course, I would be happy to take any questions. Yes, so fun questions for Melinda? Yeah. So I may have. That was a great presentation, by the way. It was really, really impressive work. Thank you. But one thing I'm curious about is you're testing this on cancer cells, right? Yep. And you want to kill them. Yep. So why are you concerned about the toxicity? Why Why do you want to do this? Uh, because, I mean, if you think about it, if you add only the wires to the cells, uh, they would induce a, tox a toxic effect. But you want really that incubation with only the wires to be minimized and be maximized when you add the combination of the wires with the field. Because the, the, the dead they exert when you only incubate the wires, it's a long term. I mean, it takes up to 72 hours or so. But what I really wanted is like to, when you add the combination of the two, have a very, uh, a more immediate effect, like a cell that within hours or less than that. So if you play with the doses you add, you minimize this, let's say, byproducts. I mean, there's not desired effects. It's, uh, high toxicity, and then you just focus in incrementing the toxicity when you add the two, when you combine the two, that is the actual treatment. Right. Also, you need to pick fields that would not decrease the viability by themselves. As, for example, you will have your tumor here in your finger, just add the wires, you can confine them there, but if you add field, you would also be exposed to uh, healthy tissue to that, to that magnetic field. So you really want the effect to be focused only where both uh, the field and the particles uh, they overlap or act at the same time. So are your are your incubation times realistic? I mean, can what happens if if I inject this in, in my in my hand, mm -hmm. will it be gone in seventy two hours? Or, uh, I mean, no experiment was done in vivo with wires. Uh, the experiment that had been done had, are with particles, and uh, yeah, no, of course the times they stay in the in the body are way longer than that. They tend to uh, get accumulated in organs like the liver, the spleen, and uh, yeah, mainly those two. But so far, you know, no, no experiment in vivo has been done with, with nanowires. And so I also, if I understand correctly, um, you don't yet have the mechanism for the wires to target the cancer cell. Uh, there was part of the original plan. Unfortunately, things took longer yeah. than expected, but yes, that would be something that, uh, I mean, like but future, future layer, you think it, it could be done? Yes, and actually some other members of my lab or they're continuing my work, well, not continuing, but like kind of following this up. They are working in attaching, let's say, a drug and then combining it with a field. And so far they have very interesting results. I mean, the combination of the two, this like kind of multimodal therapy has been proven to work better than the, the therapy school. But yes, that's the definitely the next step too. And one more. I'm familiar with nanowire. Not familiar. I'm aware of nanowire treatments to detect cancer cells, but not. I don't know of any. Are you, are you the first to try to use them to try to? Uh, people has done it. Uh, yes, but normally they use rotating fields. Like my field, what's going like up and down? like anti parallel, uh, their, their amplitude, they use fields that, that rotate. So they do the same. They add the wires to the cells, they make them rotate, but they trypsinize them. I mean, when they report uh, that the nanowire is able to move a cell, normally they either suspension cells or they are adherent cells that are trypsinized, and then you play the field and you can see live the movement. But you, I mean, I haven't seen, I haven't come across a study that does the incubation with the cells, the duplication of the field, and then see movement. They're good and see it. I mean, if the movement happens, it is, it is at a very, let's say, um, nanoscape or something because you cannot detect it with an optical microscope. I was thinking more about, I've seen things where you can do blood tests, well, in principle, you can do a blood test and it's run it over a chip that somehow the nanowires tell you if there are cancer cells in the blood sample. I've seen, seen, yeah, microfluidic devices, but not with no, wires, I think. I mean, they kind of functionalize it with antibodies and they just make a blood sample run, and then at the end you can tell 
uh, amid some disease. I mean, you, you just have, uh, you functionalize your microfluidic device with uh, markers for, you know, HIV or different uh, illnesses. And then depending on, you can do facts on the, on the cells afterwards, and then you, you can tell if the blood is, uh, I mean, if the, the person has this one illness or the other. But I haven't come up, if you have seen it with wires, send me the link, because I haven't, I haven't sure, seen it. Okay. <laughs> Many other. Another, yeah, well, the, the nanowires, you said it follows your metal into hyperthermia. And or, or if you apply it high frequencies, mm -hmm. it does, but I didn't apply high frequencies. Well, I did, but I didn't show you the results here. So it's only by the amplitude. Yeah, here is just the, uh, an oscillation for the for the frequencies I used, because they were 1 hertz and 1,000 hertz. And the typical hyperthermia frequencies are like hundreds of kilohertz. Which, so 100. Uh, normally the target hyperthermia temperatures are from 40 to 42 degrees. If you go higher, then you would like ablate the cells that it's like kind of a, uh, I mean, you're, you're way above what you want, but between 40 and 42, you're able to kill cancer cells. And it's interesting because cancer cells are more sensitive to heat. So even though you apply to a mix of cells, cancer cells would die more, would, would die more with, uh, in a hyperthermic. No, let's uh, thanks. My, my, one of my quick, quick one. And it's really, I, I just really, you know, so when you're depositing the nanowires, you use the sodium hydroxide to remove the aluminum. Yes. Right? Does that not um, also, why doesn't that also dissolve the iron? It would dissolve them if you leave them there for longer. But it's like an action specific to the aluminum. But uh, the people who taught us or like first guided us through this process, uh, yes, they asked them the same question. What if I live in longer? They would eventually end up dissolving the virus. So it's just a well. timing issue. Yes. <laughs> There's one more for <laughs> Yes. <laughs> the ratios, how, how are they approximate? Uh, we, I, oh, I never mentioned that. I measured the amount of magnetic contact with ICP, inductively coupled. Uh, ICP inductive mm -hmm. couple plasma. So I would know in micrograms per milliliter what's the magnetic material there. But I didn't want to present the results in a concentration, uh, in like as a concentration, because mm -hmm. the cell sediment, so my cells, uh, sorry, the wire sediment, the cells are grown adhering to the plate. When you add the wires, they would like slowly go in contact with the cells. So it doesn't really matter if you resist, I mean, if you add the wires in 10 microliters or 100 microliters, that would change a tenfold in the concentration. Uh, the, what is important here is that, like the material in micrograms, if you wish, that is interacting with the cells. But I mean, yes, in my thesis, uh, you can find that, for example, the micrograms equivalent to the 10 to 1, 100 to 1, and so on concentrations. <laughs> okay, there's no any more questions. Let's dance again. <laughs> Okay. I should stop this right. Okay, I will stop the broadcast. Bye, mom. Bye, husband. Thank you. <laughs>